with a little help from your friends here on TV. Math homework helpers, it's time, time for math homework helpers, oh yeah. Math homework helpers, it's time, time for math homework helpers, oh yeah. We're calling in. With us today are two super loving teachers from Pinewood Elementary. We have the lovable Mrs. Hake and also we have the adorable Mr. Tang from the math office. Such a heartfelt introduction, Polly. Sounds like you're ready for Valentine's Day this Friday. Oh, I'm so very excited for Valentine's Day, Mrs. Hake. Max, Ollie, and I will be sharing our favorite Valentine's Day jokes. That sounds like fun, Polly. Would you like to share one of your jokes with us? Sure. Okay, here we go. What did one owl say to the other owl on Valentine's Day? I don't know, Polly. What did one owl say to the other owl on Valentine's Day? I'll be yours. <laughs> <laughs> nice, Polly. Hey, speaking of animals, I got one for you, too. What do, why do skunks love Valentine's Day? Skunks? I don't know. Why? Do skunks love Valentine's Day? Because skunks are very sentimental. <laughs> <laughs> sentimental. <laughs> well done, both of you. Now, let's move on to the show. Boys and girls, if this is your first time watching, you should know that we have prizes. All you have to do is call into the show with a math question, and then you'll be able to win a chance of one of four very cool prizes from our Math Homework Helpers Puck to Pick a Prize Wall. Mr. Chang, what are the prizes today? This week's prizes are a ruler, a squishy guy, highlighter, and a useful backpack. Awesome. Don't forget that after we help our callers with their math problem, we'll drop the puck on the puck to pick a prize wall, and the caller will win whatever prize the puck lands on. Sounds great. Let's go and get things moving. Let's go to the phones. The number to call is 410-494-1459. That number again is 410-494-1459. Polly, who was our first caller today? Our first caller is Obo from Featherbed Lane in fourth grade. Hi, Obo. Happy Valentine's Day week at Math Homework Helpers. Hey, Obo. Hi, Obo. How are you, Obo? Obo. Hello. Yes. Hi, how are you today? Good. Good. Are you ready for Valentine's Day on Friday? Yes. Okay. Do you have a question we can help you with today? Yeah. Okay, what is it? 37 times 3. 37 times 3? Mm -hmm. Okay, so what strategies have you been practicing at school? What has your teacher shown you? Um, area models. Area models. Is that where you'd like to start? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. Okay, so what, what, what have you done with area models? What would you do? Um, you would draw a square and split it in half. Split it in half? Mm -hmm. Does it ma matter yeah. which way? It, it, like that or the other way? I can't see. Oh, you can't see. Okay. So I, I have a rectangle and, and I split it. It's not um, exactly in half. And I did that for a reason because I'm going to put three along the side and then I'm going to split 37. What should I split 37 into? Um, 10. Uh, into the tens and the ones. So how many tens are there? Seven. Well, three, three tens, so that's 30, plus seven ones, right? Yeah. Okay, so if we're going to do the area model, we're going to multiply 30, 30 times three, correct? Mm -hmm. Okay, what basic yeah. fact do you know? What's three times three? Twelve. Three times three. Three, six. Skip count for me. Three. Eight. Three. Three, 
nine, three, six, nine, right? But it's not really nine, it's 90 because 30 is a multiple of 10, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, what's, yes. three, what's three times seven? Three groups of seven. Three, six, nine, four, four, fifteen. Eighteen. Three, six, nine, fifteen, eighteen, twenty-one. Twenty-one is correct. So you have ninety and twenty-one, right? So now you should add the ninety plus the twenty-one. How much is ninety plus twenty-one? hundred. I'm sorry. One. Wait. If we if we broke up eleven. If we broke up ninety into ten and eleven, ninety plus ten would be one hundred, right? Plus one with plus eleven more would be one hundred. Uh, one hundred. Yeah, one hundred eleven. Sorry. Does that work for you, Obo? Okay, any other questions? Oh, no, thank you. Okay, okay you're welcome. Obo, it's Don't time go to anywhere, drop the Obo. Puck. Obo. Get it's ready, time. we're going to drop the puck today. Get ready, Mr. Ted. I'm ready. Okay. Here it goes, Obo. Highlighter. highlighter. It's a little fuzzy hair guy like me. He is cute. One crazy highlighter. Congratulations, Obo. Thanks for calling. Thanks for calling, Obo. Thank you. Bye, Bye, Obo. Okay, here we go. Mr. Okay. Tang, are you ready? It's I am me. ready. Okay, it's Nathan from Relay Elementary School, fifth grade. It's going to be a hard question. Hi, hey, Nathan. Nathan. Hi. How are you? Good, how are you? I'm fine. Thank you for asking. Yep. Hey, Nathan, what kind of question do you have for us today? Uh, so I have uh, A is equal to 80. And then I have B equals 110. Okay, A equals 80, B equals 110. So, yes. Okay. Okay. And then we have the equation 3A plus 6B equals X. 3A plus 6B equals what? X. Equals X. All right, and what are we doing here? So we have to take the 3 and um, times it by 80 because A equals 80. Okay, so this is algebra, right? This is like, this is like, uh, yeah. this is the hard stuff. Um, yeah. All right, so then we're going to solve for X. Is that what we're doing? We're going to try to figure out the unknown, which is X. And yeah. I, I love how you said we're going to substitute um, what we know, right? So we have yep. 3, and we're going to multiply that by 80. 80. And then let's substitute the um, B also. So we have 6, and we're going to multiply that by? 80, uh, 110. 110, okay. So uh -huh. this, is, this is a lot of steps here. So where do you want to yep. start? Uh, let's do 3 times 80 first. Okay, 3 times 80. Do you know, um, do you know what that is, or do you, how, do you, how do you plan uh, on solving? 240. Wow, okay. okay. How did you get that? Uh, because I did 3 times 8 equals 24, and I annexed the 0 to 24. Okay, because it's not just 8 ones, it's 8 tens, right? So instead of having 24, we have 240. All right, wonderful. Yep. And uh, this one looks hard. Do you have this one off the top of your head, 6 times 110? 660. How did you get that so fast? So I did 6 times 11 equals 66, and I just annexed the 0 to 66. It sounds like you're really good at basic facts, Nathan. Mm -hmm. That right. makes me so happy. Me too. <laughs> me too. I love basic facts. We, we all do it, Polly. <laughs> and then this is what I do. So I do the standard algorithm for addition. Okay. So I, put, so I put the highest number on top. So I do 660 plus 240. All right. Let me get there. So we have 660. Does it matter if you put the higher number at the top or bottom? It doesn't matter, but I just like it. Okay. <laughs> does, it, does it always not matter? Does it matter in subtraction? Yes, it matters in the subtraction. Uh, okay. okay. So it's a it's a good it's a good strategy rhythm to get yeah. into. Yes. All right. So yep. let's go ahead and add these. The ones. Uh, zero plus zero equals zero. All right. How about our tens? Uh, equals ten. Uh, put the zero on the bottom, and then we group the one to the top. 
Okay, we're going to re regroup it to the hundreds place. Yep. Right. And then 6 plus 1 equals 7 plus 2 equals 7. Say that Six. again. Think oh, again. Uh, 6 plus 1 equals 7 plus 2 equals 9. Good. Gotcha. All right. I think we found an answer for x, huh? Yeah. So our final answer in algebra, we always have to make sure we establish that we solved it by putting x equals 900. Yep. Well done, Nathan. All right. I love algebra. I that was too. awesome. Good job, Nathan. Yep, thank you. All Nathan, right. are you ready to drop the puck? Yes, I'm ready. Okay, All right, let's here do we it. go. The ruler. The ruler. Ooh, that'll be good for me. The yeah. stuck. Nice straight edge for you to use in class. Especially with oh. a lot of geometry yes. coming up. Bye, mm -hmm. Nathan. Thanks for calling today. Thanks, Nathan. Bye. So now we have another caller, and it's Bobby from our Arbutus Middle School. I hope you're ready for this tough question. He is in sixth grade. Hey, Bobby. And you know it's gonna be hard. Hello. Bobby, Hi, take Bobby. it easy on us. Hi, Bobby. Hello. Okay. Bring on that hard question for those the math teachers. They are ready for you. And I might learn from you today, okay. Bobby. So. Okay. Right. So in school, I've been learning about the order of operations. I know okay. that. Okay. Long problem, or Tiedemann. Or, or PEMDAS. PEMDAS. Parentheses, okay. parentheses, exponents, multiply or divide from left to right, or add and subtract from left to right. Okay, so here's my problem. 4 plus 9 divided by 3, 3 to the second power, and parentheses times 5 minus 1. All right, you lost me at halfway through this. Okay. So we have 4 plus 9 divided by 3 squared. Yeah, you yeah, you put you put nine and three to the second power in parentheses. Oh, oh okay. Okay, and then what else do we have? Um, times five minus one. Okay. Mm, this is a long one. Wow. All right. Well, you have the order of operations down. Where do we want to start? Okay, I guess you um have to do the thing that's in the parentheses first. Okay. That would be a good so, place to start. So. First, you gotta find out what the three to the second power is, which um, you just gotta multiply three times three, All and right. you get nine. All right, okay. so we have nine. Mm -hmm. And nine divided by six is. Oh, you just oh. but you just told me three to the second power is nine, but now you want to divide nine divided by six. Oh, never mind. Nine divided by. Right, well, so you said you said three nine, to nine, nine. My bad. My bad. Nine. Sorry. Okay. 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 So a tip that I always give kids is that whenever you're doing this, every step of the way, you solve one part and then you rewrite everything else on the next line. That way you can stay organized and help yourself um, maintain your train of thought. So okay. Then, so then if we have three to the second power, we bring that down. So now we have four plus open parentheses nine divided by nine close parentheses times five minus one. Yep. Okay. All right. All right. So you divide nine by nine. Okay. Right. Make one. Okay. And everything else comes down, right? So yep. can you reread the problem that we have now? Okay. Four plus one times five minus one. Beautiful. Okay. What's next? Next, you got to multiply. So that means you got to multiply the one by five. Okay. And then when you do that. So what do you get when you multiply 1 times 5? 1 times 5 equals 5. Okay, so All then right. we'll rewrite the problem again and bring everything down. Do us a favor and read that for us. 4 plus 5 minus 1. All right. Do we have any more and multiplying or dividing? Nope. The answer, 4 plus 5 equals 9. 9 minus 1 equals I love the inverted pyramid that, that begins. I yeah. love the inverted triangle. I love it that. It always um, makes me feel oh, good when yes. I feel this way. Bobby, that was a tough one. That was a long one. Very well done, Mr. Tyne. It really, it, 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 we could see that he really knows his order of operations on that. Yeah. Yes. All right. So did that answer your problem, Bobby? Yes. Okay. Thanks for calling, Bobby. Are you, you ready, ready to, to drop the puck? Yes, drop that puck. Drop Let's that do puck. it. Drop <laughs> that puck. 
Drop that butt. It's the backpack. Backpack. Ooh. A backpack for Bobby. Nice job, Bobby. Thanks for Thank calling. You. Thank you, Thank Bobby. You. Thanks for calling, Bobby. Bye, Bobby. Uh -huh. Okay, my Bye. favorite math teachers, we have another caller. Okay, who okay. do we have, Polly? Um, it's Jacqueline, and she's from Feather Bed Lane, and she is in the fourth grade. You ready to help her? Uh, we are. Hey, Let's Jacqueline. Say hi. How you doing, Jacqueline? Hi. How are you? Good. Good. Do you have a question today, Jacqueline? Yes. Okay. Okay, it says, David works at a candy store. He makes $35 a week. He is trying to reach $500 by the end of the year. How many months slash weeks will that take? It's a good problem. Okay, so let, let me be clear again. He makes $35 a week. Yes. And he wants to make $500 in a year. Yes. Okay. Is there anything else, any other information we need to know? Or that? He, um, uh, oh, he also works. Oh, uh, I don't know what to say. He works at a shoe store on the weekend and earns $10 every weekend. Oh, $10 a weekend. He's a hardworking kid. Yes. <laughs> okay, so you want to figure out how long it's going to take him to um, save $500? Yes. Okay. All right, so where would you start here? Uh, since there's 12 months in a year, I would, uh, oh wait, no, I would add 35 plus four plus a 10, together and that's that's and, 25. And why would you do that? Because there is no point of just being like like to, so to solve the weeks and then the weekends and then put them yeah. together. Okay, so you're saving yourself a step. I like that because we know it's, it's one really weekend a year, uh, one weekend a week. Okay, so now we have really we have $45 a week he's earning. Yes? Yes. Okay. So what is the next step you would like to take? Um, maybe, um, make like 12 different circles and put 45 in them. Wow, that would, we, we could do that, but why 12? Why'd you say 12? Be because there's 12 months in a year. I agree. However, you said that it's $35 a week, right? Mm -hmm. So don't we yeah. have to figure out how much we'd have to make in a month? Yeah. Okay, so how many weeks are there in a month? Oh, like um, four? There are four? There are four weeks in a month. So really, okay. you want to say he's making $45 a week for four weeks, right? Mm -hmm. Would you want to find that out first to feel how much he's making in the month? Yes. Okay, so why don't we do that? What's 45 times 4? How would you solve that? You, um, want, you want to use partial products? Do you want to use a standard algorithm? Do you want to use um, area models? Um, do, do you want I to know, add? I know that um, I want to add. Okay. I know that. I, kn I know where you're going, so you know that. What do you know? Yeah, about um, 40, 40 plus 40 is 80, and 5 plus 5 is 10, so that's 90. Okay. That's a really good strategy. I like that. Jacqueline, does your question ask you how many weeks, how many months? What, what's your question ask? It says, David is trying to save up five hundred dollars a year. He he earns thirty five dollars a week and he also works at a shoe store and makes ten dollars a weekend. Is is there any is there a question to it? How many 
how many months will it take him to reach his goal? Okay. Five hundred dollars. Okay. All right. So that so that's the part months. we missed. Okay. Okay. So how many months? So if we mm -hmm. put that um, into a statement, we'd say blank months to make. $500, right? That way we can go back and fill that in. Okay, so now we know that he, mm -hmm. he, he makes $90 a month, right? Yes. Okay, so think to yourself, you have $90, mm -hmm. and he has to get to 500 So how many groups of 90 is he going to have to do, have to work to, to get there? So 90 is about how much? 90 is close to what? Mm -hmm. 100? 90 is close to 100, right? So if he worked four months, ooh, not 1,000. He'd be a lucky guy. He'd already be there now. He'd already, <laughs> he'd be done. If you estimated that it was $100 a month, mm -hmm. he'd have to work how many months? Five months? You'd have to work five months, right? But 90 is not quite 100, is it? No. No. So think to yourself, so about how, your answer is going to be about five months, right? Yes. Okay. So let's keep that in mind that we're saying about five months so that we can, uh, when we do our multiplication, we can make sure that we're in the right ballpark. Okay? okay. So now you have your okay. 90. Do you want to divide? Do you want to multiply? Do you want to add? You liked um, adding, didn't you? I liked adding. Okay. Adding is like a lot easier for me. Okay, so let's start at five months since we know that it's about how long it's going to take. Okay. Okay. All right. So I know you like adding, but I think there's a really a more efficient way. If you think you have one, two, three, four, five groups of 90, you know a basic fact right there. Five times nine. Yeah, and what's that? Mm, five, 10, 15, 15, 45, 30, 35, 40, 45. 45. So it's really 400, 450, right? Because it's uh -huh. a multiple of 10. Okay. So how far yeah. away is 450 from 500? Mm, five, 50. It's, only, it's 50 away, right? So if you have 500 yes. minus 450, it would leave you with $50, right? Mm -hmm. So is he going to work a half a month or a whole nother month? Half a month? Well, does it ask you for how many weeks or does it ask you how many months? How many months? Yes. Yeah. So how many months is he going to have to work to get there then? Five and a half? He can't work five and a half months. He has to work a whole month. He needs to work six months. He's going to have some money left over, but he has to work six months to, to earn that money. Very well done. Yeah, that was some really good thinking, Jacqueline. Are Thank you, you? You're welcome. All Let's right, Jacqueline, that is that, is that, does it help your question? Yes. Oh, okay, so what time is it? It's the uh, drop, drop the punk. <laughs> drop the punk. Like let's do yep. it. Let's drop the All right, let's, let's drop it. Okay. Highlighter. Ooh, highlighter again. That's my favorite. That's so cute. Awesome. Okay, Jacqueline, thank you so much. Thanks you have a great calling. Valentine's Day. Thanks Happy for calling, Jacqueline. Okay, bye bye. Bye bye. I actually already got the highlighter. Oh, you oh. did? Yeah. Okay, so maybe maybe we can switch it for you and send you something different, okay? Yeah, what, what, what do you want you instead, like? Jacqueline? Um, uh, a, a backpack, please. A backpack? a backpack? I think I, I think we can make that happen for you. Okay, All right. Backpack is okay. You got it. All right. Bye, bye Jacqueline. Bye. You're Thanks welcome. Thanks for calling, Jacqueline. Bye bye. All right. So you know we use math in all in our way, so many ways in our life. So not just in a math class. So let's head out to the streets of VCPS to see who Maria is talking to now. Math on the street. Hola, yo soy Maria, and I love math. Here at BCPS, 
We use math every day, everywhere, and in every office and school. Come with me, I'll show you how. Today, I'm here with Kimberly Pantagar, an art teacher at Stemmers Run Middle School. Miss Pantagar, is math really a part of art? Hello, Maria. Thanks for coming to Stemmers Run. And it sure is. And I'm going to show you an example. <gasps> Great, let's hear it. Maria, do you know what primary colors are? Mmm, not really. Primary colors are the three main colors on the color wheel, red, blue, and yellow, that all of the other colors come from. By mixing primary colors together, we get brand new colors, like purple, green, and orange. In fact, artist Pablo Picasso had three different recipes for mixing colors. Let's look at how he would make the color green. Okay. Here's where the math comes in. So recipe one says that one part of blue with three parts of yellow, or in other words, one to three. Recipe two says four parts of blue with eight parts of yellow, or four to eight. This is also one half. And recipe three is three parts of blue with five parts of yellow, three to five. The more blue paint we have in our ratio determines how dark the green paint is. And this works for all colors. Oh, wow, I see. So that's just one example of how math and art work together. Ratios, colors, wow, I've learned so much. I love art. Thanks for stopping by, Maria, and please come back again. Okay, adios. It's really cool. Did you see them in an art room? Who knew there was math in art? I didn't even know it. I think I missed out how big that crayon pack was. Did I, I saw that. that number? It said 120. It did say that. So we have a next caller. Are you ready? Ready. Okay, this is Evie from Arbutus Middle School. She's in sixth grade. Hi, Evie. Hi, Hi Evie. Evie. Thanks for calling in. Do you have a question for our teachers? Yes. All right, okay. Evie, take it easy on us. It's two to the seventh power. Two to the seventh power? Mm-hmm. Ooh. Is that, is that the whole question? Yes. Okay. All right. So what do you know about this so far? This is an exponent, right? What do you know about exponents? Uh... They're multiples. They're multiples, or it tells you to you have to multiply. It's telling you an operation. Yeah, that. Okay. <laughs> okay, so let's take a look at it. A lot of times, and, I, and I'm so happy Miss Hake said that because a lot of times kids see this, and what do you think the most commonly wrong answer is? Hmm. Fourteen. Eight. They take two and they <laughs> multiply it by that seven, and they get fourteen. Mm -hmm. That is the most commonly wrong answer. So. How do we want to set this up? What is 2 to the power of 7 really saying? Um, 2 times 7? Mm. Well, th there's... Two seconds. Sorry, sweetie, go ahead. 7 times? It's, it's, you're multiplying 7 different times, right. but you're not multiplying the, the numeral 7. Because if we did what you're saying, we were taking 2 and multiplying it 7 times, that's... That's the same thing as... 2 times 7. 2 times 7, or what, 7 groups of 2. What we're actually doing is we're taking the number 2 and we're multiplying it by itself how many times? 7, seven, seven times. times. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Wow. That's a lot of multiplying. Mm -hmm. All right, so... Um, we just had another sixth grader from Arbutus call earlier, and he said he was doing order of operations, right? It's, it's one, it's only one operation, but we have to do it so many different times. I would love to separate some of it, wouldn't you? Yeah, we could definitely separate it, or we could do it one little at a time. I would like step. that. I would okay. like that. What, so, would, what would you like to do, Evie? Um, what do you I think we should do to make it more simple, to simplify it for us? I'm going to... Two, two times two. All right, and we have a we have a good amount of two times two. So if we if we do this, what's, what is two times two? Four. Okay, so we have four here, and then we could do another two times two. So we can multiply it by another four, and then we have another two times two. Eight. Well, we're not we're not sweet. We have to. Oh. 
figure out our next step now. So now we've grouped, can we use parentheses to, to group them together so we can see that more clearly? So Evie, do you see how we, how we group the, the two times two together? Yes. Okay, so we, we, we put the parentheses there so you can see that we group those together. Okay, so now we made it even easier. So now we have, we, the two times two was four, and the next two times two was four, and the next group of two times two was four, and there was one two remaining. So now we have four times four times four times two. That's a lot. It is, yeah. but we can group them together again. Yeah, so what, what, what is four times four? Four times four is 16. Okay, so we have 16. And then we have four times two over here. Do you know what four times two is? Eight. All right, so then we have one multiplication problem left to do. 16 times eight. Uh, 128. Cool. Wow, that was pretty good. I was, I was, I was going to see how we can do it. <laughs> so let, why don't we go ahead and set that up in um, the area model. So we had 16 times 8. Let's draw our little area model. And we have 8 on one side, and we can split 16 up by its 10s and 1s, right? Yes. So we have 10 and 6. 10 plus 6. Is so this how you did it in your head, Evie? No. Okay. All right. So if we had 8 times 10, what do we have? Uh, 80. And what about 8 times 6? 60. Mm, 8 times 6. Oh, uh, 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 I forgot. Well, 8 times 5 is 40. So 40 plus 8? 48. There Good we job. go. All right, so now we have our partial products. We can just add them up together. If we have 80 plus 48. 128. Yes. There we go. So you were correct. We just wanted to see how you got there and help others at home. How did you get too. that so fast? Uh, I wrote it down. <laughs> okay. Did you use the standard algorithm when you wrote it down? I multiplied it like two times two, it was four, and then four times two is eight, and then eight times two is 16. Okay. Okay. So you just, so when you solved this problem, you just went one, two at a time, multiplied one, two at a time? Mm-hmm. Oh, nice, okay. Nice. But do, right. do you see how we did it a little bit different, how we combined some of those two times twos? Mm-hmm. Wh oh, which right. way was more efficient for you, Evie, doing it two times two, and then four times two? And then eight the times two. Did it. The way we did it. Okay, so maybe next time you try it that way and see if it works for you. Okay. Okay, Evie. Okay. All right. Thanks for calling in, Evie. Evie, you ready to drop the puck? Yes. Okay. okay let's do it. All right. I'm gonna go towards the middle for you, Evie, and see where it goes. Okay. There it goes. The ruler. And well, it that's has our number on it, Evie, in case you need to know it again. <laughs> Thanks, for, Thanks for calling in, Evie. Have bye, a great Evie. night. Have a good bye. night. Take bye care. Thank you. Bye. We have a new caller. We do, Polly. Yep, we do. Her name's Rosa Lee okay. from Franklin. She's in first grade. Hi, Rosa Lee. First grade. Hi, hi, hi Rosa Lee. Hi. How are you? Good. Good. Are you excited for Valentine's Day? Yes. You can send me your chocolate if you want to. I like the caramels. <laughs> I like chocolate too, Mrs. Oh, good, Polly. Hey, yep. What's your favorite? Do you like caramels um, too? Um, I have to think about it for a little while while you do math. Okay. I'll think. All okay. right, we can do that. We can think about chocolate later. Okay, Rosalie, do you have a question? Yes. Okay, what is it, sweetie? Sophia's dog ate ten dog biscuits last week. Miss Reed's dog ate six dog biscuits last week. How many more dog biscuits did Sophia's dog eat? So you're working right in the equation. Make sure your answer is clear. Okay. That was some really good that, reading. That was great really reading. Really good reading. But Mrs. Haig, I, I think, lost you in the beginning. So now I know it's about dog biscuits. So now I have a better frame of mind. Can you read it for me again a little bit slowly? Sophia's dog ate 10 dog biscuits last week. Okay. Miss Reed's dog ate six dog biscuits last week. 
How many more dog biscuits did Sophia's dog eat? So your work and write an equation and make sure your answer is clear. Okay, great. Monday. Okay, so we have somebody, Sophia's dog ate 10 biscuits, right? Yes. All right, and the other person's dog ate six biscuits? Yes. Okay, and they want to know how much more did Sophia eat? Yes. Sophia's dog. So do you want to add or subtract? What would you do? If you want to find out how much more it is, you want to find the difference. You want to subtract. That's good. Yeah, because we're comparing to different numbers, right? And Sophia clearly had, Sophia's dog clearly ate more. Yeah. So you'd start with that, right? Yeah. And if we have an equation, an equation is just like a sentence. So you have to have words and have a period at the end. So in an equation, we have to have numbers and an equal sign and an answer. Okay? So now we have part of our equation, but now we have to solve it. So how would you like to solve it? Do you want to just count back six? Do you want to count up from six? What would you like to do? Up from six. Okay. So if you start at six, right, then you can count up seven, eight, nine, ten, right? Seven, eight, nine, ten. So you hopped once, two, three, four times. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, so 10 minus 6 is 4, right? 4, yeah. So she ate four more biscuits. Oh my, not, bis not bisquicks. <laughs> they're, biscuits. Fa they're fancy biscuits. They are fancy biscuits. <laughs> All right, does that solve your question? Yes. Did you, um, did you solve yours the same way Ms. Hake solved hers, with a number line? No, we actually uh, drew a picture. Oh, oh you drew okay. a picture. What picture did you draw? How did you do it? I wrote 10, and then 600, then I made, with, uh, next to 6, I made 6 circles, and then I made 10 circles, and then I, ma I add them up and made a line, the ones that have matches and then the others don't and then I count them up. One, two, three, four. Wow, I like that That's strategy. That's a really good strategy. That's that really is good fabulous. Strategy. Especially because her, pap that. her paper says show your work and I and I love that you did that. And we showed you another way to do that too. So now you have two different ways mm -hmm. to do it. Great job. Good job that was Rosalie. awesome. All right. Are Rosalie, you ready to drop the puck? All right, Rosalie, yep. ready? Here Let's we go. Let's do it. All right, Rosalie, here we go. Let's go here. Ooh, backpack. your very Ooh, own backpack. backpack. That's awesome. Congratulations. Congratulations, Rosalie. Thank you. Bye, Rosalie. Don't forget my caramels. caramels. <laughs> we have another caller now. Oh, we sure do. Guess what he knows? Miss Hake, I have a feeling Hake. you want to take I this one. I think I might want this hi? one. Okay, say hi to your young friend from Pinewood Elementary School, Mrs. Hake. Go. Is this my Vladimir? Yep. Hi, Vlad. How are <laughs> you? Hi, Vlad. Hey, Oh, hi, baby. Do you have a question for me, love? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Do you know where he's going with this? I don't know where he's going for this, but... In the picture, uh, it shows three twelfths of the circle are shaded. Which fraction is equivalent to three twelfths? Okay, so Ooh. we're finding an equivalent fraction for three twelfths. Okay, so if I was, if you were not my student, I'd say, what would your teacher tell you to do first? What could you do? Because I'm not going to draw twelfths very nicely. I could. Break it up. Nah. I'm, I'm a horrible 12th maker. <laughs> okay, um, so Vladimir, what's the first step we can do, baby? Uh, the we first did, step we can do is... So you could break it up, right? So if we didn't have a circle, one, two, three, yeah. four, five. We could have a rectangle, right? Okay. And you can have your three 12s, yep. right? So what's one step we could do instead of... Um, You could break it up, you said, right? So you could split these. 
right? Yep. So now how many pieces would we have all together? So instead of 12, so how many do you have all together? If we split each 12 up. 12, if you split it up, you would have, well, if there was 12 is 6. So no, you'd split it, so it would, you'd have more pieces. So you'd have double the amount of pieces. Double the amount. Right. So what's 2 times 12? So what's 12 plus 12, or 12, two groups of 12? 24. 24, okay. So Vlad, we would have 24 pieces. And if we look, we have... One, two, three, four, five, five six. six. So six twenty-fourths is one equivalent fraction, right? Yep. But also we said if we had it, one, two, three, four, five. Another way would be, oh, just three, to group them, right? Let's see. Yeah, baby. And it, it shows me answers that I'm supposed to color, and it shows me one third, one fourth, one tenth, and one twelfth. Yep. Okay. So I'm I am getting to that. Hold on a second, Vlad. So we can group them too, right? Remember grouping them? Yes, Mrs. Haig. I remember grouping them. <laughs> right. So Vlad, is there is there only one answer to having equivalent fractions? Because we just showed you one here that's not one of your answer choices, right? Nope. Okay. Right. So let's think about grouping them, Vlad. If we were going to group 12s, could we group them by 3s? Four groups of 3? Is that what I made? Yep. Right? Right, Vlad? Yep. Okay, so how many groups are colored in or shaded in? I just I should, that, I should do that. There was three groups. So oh. there was one group here, two groups, yep. three groups, four groups. How many are shaded in? <laughs> there's four groups in purple. Out of those four so groups. There's none shaded here, none shaded next to it. There's none here. There's none here, there's none here, but this group is shaded, right? Yes. So that's one-fourth of it is shaded. Okay, so is that my answer? Well, could it be your answer? Yes. It could be your so, answer, yes. Um, it's on the answer chart, so I guess it is. It could be. Is there any, it, does it say choose two or just choose one? It shows two, it doesn't show how many. Okay, so if it doesn't say choose two, then you can choose one, and that's your equivalent fraction. If, if you got to write in your own, you could say six twenty-fourths as well. Okay. Okay? I don't know right now. You're going to do that right now? Yep. Okay. Sounds good. Good job, bud. Okay, Vlad. Well done, Vladimir. Are you ready to drop the puck? Let's do it. Yeah. Let's okay, get you a Bob. prize today. Maybe your teacher can deliver it to you tomorrow. Uh, hopefully I can. All right, Ooh, the first a one. Squishy guy. Squishy guy. All right. Vlad, are you still there? Yes. Okay, so I'll bring you your squishy guy in the morning, okay? Okay, thank you, Miss A. You're Make welcome. sure to play Thanks with it in for class. Calling. Bye. <laughs> Bye. Bye, baby. Bye. See you tomorrow. Bye. Yeah. So before we take our next caller, we're going to head out to one of our very own Baltimore County Public Schools and check in for a Mighty Math Minute. My name is Ty J and this is your Mighty Math Minute. Mighty Math Minute! Marco wants to buy a book of magic that costs $17.50. He gives the salesperson a $20 bill. How much change would Marco get back? This is what we know. The book cost $17.50 and he gave the salesperson a $20 bill. So what we have to do to get the answer is do $20 minus $17.50. So first we will do zero minus zero, which is zero. 
0 minus 5, which we can't take 0 from 5. So what we have to do is have to regroup from the 2, make it a 1, and then make the 10 and make it to a 9, and then make this to a 10. This will be a 5. And then we would put the decimal point here. Then we would do mi 9, mi 9 minus 7, which is 2, and then 1 minus 1 is 0. So Marco will get $2.50 back. That was awesome! I love that stuff. Yeah. So we have another caller now. Awesome. All right. Are you ready, Mr. Tang? I'm ready. Okay, this is Amaya from Newtown. She's in fourth grade. Hi! Hi! Hi. Hi. Maya, what kind of question do you have for us today? Oh, what's oh, your name? What's your name? Oh, Amaya. 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 Okay. All right, Amaya. Do you have a question for us? Yes. Okay. What's your question, um, sweetie? The fraction of three and one. Three and one? Is it three over one? Is it no, three it's fractions? one over three. Okay. Oh, so one third. One over three. One third. One third. And if you have to say one of the halves, then it's a triangle. And it's equal three equal parts. So are they showing you a triangle and asking you to make three equal parts? No, they say shade what needs to be shaded. Oh, what needs to be shaded in. So we have a triangle and we want to make three equal parts, right? Yes, yeah, so you have to partition mm -hmm. this triangle. Okay. Does it look like that? Yes. Yeah. All okay. right. So then we have to shade in this fraction, the one third of the triangle? Yes. Yeah. Okay, so what does the denominator three mean? It's three parts. It's three parts. Okay, awesome. So, in so the we whole. have our three equal parts. So then what is that one, the numerator, what does that one represent? The parts that should be shaded. Okay. Yeah, you're absolutely right. So how many of these three equal pieces should we shade in? One. Just yeah. one, yeah. Just one. There we go. There you go. Can you see that? Mm-hmm. It, was that your question, or was there another part to it? That was my question. That was your question. I'm pretty uh, impressed with that question, and I'm pretty impressed with Mr. Tang's ability to break up that the triangle. That yeah. triangle. A Took lot of me people years and years of experience for that. Yes. <laughs> yeah, kids you, have the hardest time breaking up that triangle. Triangle is really hard. Do you have any other questions, Amaya? Yes. Okay. Um. Amaya, if it said two-thirds, if it said two over three, what would you have to do? You have to shade another one. Okay, just making sure we're on the yeah. same page. Awesome. Amaya, is this two-thirds of a triangle if I did this? No, because it's not even. Yeah, okay, they are good. not even. Awesome. Good job. That's the answer. That was a, a trick, trick question. I tried to trick you, Amaya. I'm sorry. You're but you, trick you, you were better than that. Amaya. It's okay. not April Fool's. It's not. Oh, that not yet. <laughs> Oh, oh boy. Okay. Can't wait till that episode. Okay. Let's Maya, drop that ready? Call, call, Maya. Let's do it. I hear it. I hear it. It's the backpack. Oh. A backpack for Maya. I love it. You can use it for sleepovers. <laughs> Bye, Maya. Thanks for calling, Bye, Maya. Maya. Okay, we have our next caller. Our next caller is Mackenzie from Honeygow. Hi, Mackenzie. How are you? Hi. Hi, Mackenzie. How are you doing today? Great. Great. Do you have a question for us? Yeah. Okay. If Leah wrote two different fractions with the same denominator, both fractions were less than one. Can the sum equal to one, and can they be greater than one? Okay. Can you read that again slowly for me? Yes. Okay. Leah wrote two different fractions 
two different fractions. With the same denominator. Okay. Both fractions were less than one. They were less than one. Okay. Can the sum equal one? And can the sum be greater than one? Okay, can the sum equal one? And can the sum be greater than one? Yes. Okay. So we're using the same fractions or different fractions? I think we're using the same fractions. That's what it says. The same fractions. All right. So we have two fractions. The sum is equal. Wait, it's different fractions. It says we have wrote two different fractions. Two okay, different two different fractions. fractions. Okay. But they okay. but you use the same denominator. Same denominator. Same denominator. That were less than one. The sum equals one, and it was greater than one. So both fractions ha are less than 1. Uh-huh. And if we add them together, it should equal 1. Yes. Okay. All right, let's, let's, let's start. All what right. denominator do you want to use? Uh, 9. 9? Nine? Ninths? All right. Yeah. Okay. okay. So? So we know that how many ninths equals 1 whole? Nine. Okay. Nine. So okay. 9 ninths. So, so I'm going to change this one whole and make it a ninth as a denominator so we can good. see that clearly. Because we know that okay. 9 over 9 equals one whole, right? Yeah. We have right. 9 ninths. Okay, so I'm going to make that one whole. That's my ma I'm going to make my magic one. Mm, I, I love it. I love, I love my magic one. I didn't know you could make magic ones. Yeah, any fraction, same number over itself equals one. Yeah, a magic one. Magic one. Magic That's one. what I call it, at least. I, I like the magic <laughs> one. How much okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Mackenzie. Um, wh what would you like to do? So we have we have ninths is, is our denominator. So what's a numerator you'd like to choose for your first fraction? Uh, two. Two. Okay. All right. So Mackenzie. So we have two ninths, and we need to add up to nine ninths for it to equal one whole. So how many ninths are you going to need to add to two to get to nine? Would it be four? Mackenzie, oh if you, you need nine ninths altogether, right? Yeah. Okay. You already have two. That's what you chose. So think about you have nine. If you take away two, how many would you have left? Seven. Okay. You'd have seven. So two ninths plus seven ninths equals nine ninths, which equals one whole, correct? Okay. All right, so this is the part that we have to try to figure out now. Yeah. So what was the next part of the question? Um, can the sum be greater than one? Okay. okay. With the same numbers? With two different fractions. Oh. So with the same denominator? Yeah. Okay, so why don't we leave it at nine? At nine. Okay. Okay. Huh? And so why don't you think about any number between one and nine that's greater than four? Eight. Eight. Okay. And so the only stipulation was that the fraction has to be, each of the fractions have to be less than one. Right. So eight ninths is definitely less than one. All right. Right. So yeah. in order to get nine ninths, you need how many more? Just what? Just one to make one whole, right? Yeah. So any fraction that's greater than one ninth is going to give you a sum that's greater than one whole. Right? Yeah. Okay. So just pick any fraction that's greater than one ninth. Thank you. No, no. Well, well let's let's choose it. We well, need to hear the while answer. we're here. Yeah, pick it. Pick one. Uh, Not one. Any number between any fraction between one ninth. Well, between two ninths and nine ninths. Well, uh, between eight two ninth. ninths and eight ninths. Eight ninths. Eight ninths. I like it. Okay. Well, we know that. Our denominator remains the same, right? And what's 8 plus 8? 16. 16. And we know that if we have 9 parts to make a whole, that 16 is greater than 9, so that has to be greater than 1, right? Yeah. Okay, so there you well go. Done. You can add 8 ninths and 8 ninths and still get a number that's greater than 1 with the same denominator. You ready All to right, drop Mackenzie, that puck? All right, Mackenzie, you ready to... Uh... Okay, let's drop that puck, Mr. Tang. Backpack, backpack. Oh, backpack. 
Are you are you watching Dora lately or something? <laughs> it's a lot of backpack, <laughs> yeah. We've got a lot of backpacks. Okay, we have another caller. Are you ready? All right. It's Kara from Hi. Middle River Middle School. She's Hi, in seventh grade. Hi, Kara. Hi, Kara. Hi. 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 Do you have a question for us? Hold on. Okay. Let's hear it. Hi, Kira. Kira. Do you have a question, honey? Uh, okay. Kira, do you have a math homework question for our great teachers? Yes. Okay. Let's hear it. A tree farm has a hundred acres square field arranged in a 10 by 10 array. The farmer wants to know the average number of trees per array. Each cell in the number represents an array. The number in each cell represents the number in the array. Based on the example, predict the average number on the trees array. How does your answer compare with the mean, actual mean number? Okay, so I, I was a little unclear, but... We so we have, uh, we have 100 square acres, you said, and it's 10 by 10, right? Yes. All right, so okay. what's the question here? Based on your example, predict, predict the average number of trees per tree. How does your answer compare with the actual mean number? Okay. okay. So how many trees are there? Did it tell you? No. 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 Okay. And as an a grid contains fifty four trees. A okay. grid, okay. So a grid each of these grids has trees. fifty so there's fifty four trees. Okay. So what we need to do to find the average then is we know that there's a hundred square feet and there's fifty four trees per square foot. So we can say there's fifty four over one hundred. Because there's fifty four trees over a hundred square foot. So if we simplify it we can break it down to its simplest form, and that's going to be 5 and 4 tenths over 10. Wow, I would just cut it in half and start it from there. <laughs> yeah, I just took it and just divided it by Good 10. Good job, Mr. Tang. Okay. I, I, I'm not sure, but you know what? That's a great starting point for this question. Okay? Okay. And unfortunately, Let's drop that puck. I think we're running out of time, we so are if you want to quickly drop the puck, Ready? thank Let's you get for a calling in. For our friend Kira. Another backpack. backpack. It's a backpack kind of day. Backpack. Okay, I hope I hope that helped a little bit for you. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Bye. Bye. All right. Okay, well, kids, that's all the time we have for this episode. Be sure to tune in next week. And remember, we do re-air each episode, so be sure to watch. You can even watch these episodes online on our YouTube page. Check it out, and be sure to tell your friends to watch, too. We look forward to seeing everyone again next week. Only, Only here, here on, on BCBS TV. TV.